Are fine scale triggerfish too boring to study? Hi friends, what's going on? My name is Brandon and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic animals with you through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the creatures that live in them. Today we're going to be discovering the rocky home of the fine scale triggerfish. Are you ready? Let's dive in. All right, let's get into this. Fine scale triggerfish, or Ballistes polylepis, are a classic bodied triggerfish. They range from Eastern Pacific Ocean, including California, down the coast to Chile, Galapagos Islands, and the Hawaiian Islands. Let's discover their preferred habitat next. They prefer rocky reefs, coral reefs, and rocky slopes in association with sand spots. So think something like a patchy, rocky, or coral coastland spotted through sand patches. They are a subtropical to tropical fish preferring warm waters. Although the Eastern Pacific Ocean water is typically cooler than the Western Pacific Ocean, cold water from the Antarctic gets pulled along the depths of the Eastern Pacific Ocean north until it hits Alaska, then it gets pulled up to the surface. Sometimes water circulates the earth for 1,000 years before it surfaces again. Oh, I, I got distracted. Okay. Fine scale triggerfish can be found between 3 and 60 meters or 9.8 to 196.8 feet deep. So how am I going to portray this fish in my painting? I want to make it feel like you are snorkeling or swimming in the ocean waters of Hawaii. It is a warm day, chilling with your fish friends. So let's go over my painting process. I take my own reference photo for my adventures. It allows me to get the angles and the detail that I want to use for a reference in my painting. Once I have that, then I can create a compelling composition. In the past, I have just painted the exact reference photo. This allowed me to strengthen my skills with my background details. However, I didn't like the composition of my reference photo. It was too dark and too busy. It distracted from the fish. Good thing I can change that on the fly. I used the golden ratio to measure the focal points on my canvas. It is a simple it is as simple as multiplying the height or width by 0.618. This gives you a line or grid where focal points can be placed. It is also a place where background surfaces can be placed. So I use tracing paper to create my composition. Since I can erase and change things around easier. Once I am happy, I use transfer paper to transfer my subject and background onto my canvas. It keeps the lines on the canvas clean and easy to read. Once the lines are on the canvas, I seal the graphite lines with a burnt umber or raw sienna tone. This is just watered down acrylic paint. Oh, I use acrylic paints for my paintings. I use Liquitex Basics. They're a light, fast, and high quality for a low price. Once that layer is totally dry, I can start my painting. I use three steps when painting. First step is blocking in. I use large brushes with thin layers of paint to set the overall tones and feeling of my painting. These are to play with colors and to get a base coat over the tone. Next, I go to the modeling phase. Here I work on my mid-tones and darks. I can layer over base layers to start getting my smaller details and colors set. I use smaller brushes and start creating textures onto the canvas. Since I am playing with my composition and making it up on the spot, I do a little more playing around with the paint and the colors than I normally would. During this and blocking in phase, I mix my colors with mixing white. This is a softer, more transparent white. If I were to use titanium white here, it would be very easy to blow out my colors. 
I want the subtle color changes and want to keep the colors subdued. This way I can bring in my brightest highlights at the end. Things that are farther away have a blue tint to them, so my shadows are not super dark. I use little contrast to push the background further from you. Then use bright colors and rich darks in the foreground. This pushes the scene and gives a huge amount of depth. During my last phase, called my detail phase, I use small brushes. I can work on my highlights and details. Be careful not to get too many tiny details into the background. I save my finest details for things closest to the viewer. This process does take time and several layers. I love working with Liquitex for this reason. It is a paint great for many layers. It shows layers underneath it and gives a cool transparent effect. I can use titanium white to bring out my brightest highlights as well. I do this sparingly, but with enough texture so paint sticks off of the canvas just a bit. It can catch real world light and plays with its surroundings well. Once this is finished, I can use either glass bead gel medium, pearlescent paint, or glitter to add depth and play to the light of my water. And that is my process for painting. I keep it the same and approach every painting like this. It keeps it almost scientific in approach. In science, experiments should be repeatable and easy to follow the steps. I find that it works great for art as well. Let's move to our next segment of the adventure. Let's discover the physical appearance and behavior of the fine scale triggerfish. What are we looking for when identifying the fine scale triggerfish? They have a classic triggerfish body and size, so what does that mean? They are compressed laterally and almost disc shaped. This body shape tells me that they are good at maneuverability through the rocks and coral. They are probably good at evading prey by ducking between thin spaces and turning quickly to hide. They grow to 76 centimeters, or roughly 30 inches, at fork length. We can take a fork length because their tail is a crescent shape. Triggerfish are known for having collapsible rigid spines on either their dorsal and or ventral sides. The fine scale triggerfish has three folding spines on its dorsal surface before the soft rays. They have between 24 and 28 soft rays on their dorsal fin. They use these and their anal fin for their propulsion as well as assistance from their tail fin. Their anal fin sticks down from the bottom of the fish and balances out the pressures of propulsion from the dorsal fins. What coloration do these fish have? They are light tan, olive gray to a light blue, depending on their habitat with no visible identifying marks or patterns on them. There is very little information about the fine scale trigger fish, and their coloration is boring. That is why I wondered if this fish is too boring to research. Sure, some people have studied it, and I thank them for that. But would you rather study a bright colored fish? seal, turtle, or whale while in Hawaii, or a plain, common triggerfish? I know what I would say. They have high eyes and small forward-facing mouth filled with strong plate-like teeth. They have four teeth on the top jaw and four on the bottom, where the longest teeth are in the middle. This tells us a little bit about the diet of this fish, but I will get there later in the adventure. Fine scale triggerfish have small diagonally uniform scales across their bodies, creating a thick skin, almost like leather, across their bodies. These scales are why it is, has the name fine scale triggerfish. There is no distinctive lateral line in this fish, 
which is weird for me. Most fish that I study have a pronounced lateral line. For those new to the world of fish biology, a lateral line is a sensory organ that runs along the side of the fish and sharks. It detects pressure, movement, and electricity in the things around them. It is typically visible on the fish and sharks and runs from the operculum, or gill cover, to the tail. Let's move to behavior. Now, I could not find official data from scientific studies, so I'm going to use my personal observations. They can spend times in groups, or solitary for a while. Some fish need to be surrounded by other fish constantly, and other fish are only found alone. The triggerfish is a combo of these. From what I saw, they form small schools and associate with other fine-scale triggerfish, but are not afraid to venture on their own to explore food options in the reef. They pick and they prod at the rocks and coral looking for things to eat. This brings us to our next segment of the adventure. What do they eat and how are they doing? Fine scale triggerfish are carnivores. They eat crustaceans, sea urchins, worms, and other mollusks. Remember their teeth? They're great for breaking open hard shells and tough skin. They chew and crush their prey, making a mess while eating. Don't worry, they get most of their food again. Anything left over will help feed other fish. Imagine eating scraps from another person's plate instead of finding your own food all the time. Fish do this all the time. How are the fine scale trigger fish doing? The, IU the IUCN red list has them listed as least concern. The most recent study was conducted in 2008. That is getting a little old, so that is the perfect time for someone to do a population study of these fish and do a report. So basically, they are everywhere. They're not a hazard to humans. They don't get overfished. They aren't being pressured by other fish or species. They're just chilling in the wild and in captivity. Not a ton to say about them here. Let's go to our last segment of the adventure, my personal encounter with the fine scale trigger fish. I saw this specific individual at the Maui Ocean Center. It was swimming in a huge tank with other reef fish. It and other fish were swimming around, minding their own business, cruising the tank back and forth. Then blam! I come up, take photos, watch their movements, and the next thing they know, they're a subject of my painting. They turn into an instant celebrity. Well, they don't have a shell, but they're fin with that. I watched this one for a while, maybe two or three minutes. And that's a long time for a fish that doesn't do much. Going to an aquarium with me is a slow process. I have seen other fine scale trigger fish in the wild while snorkeling and swimming in the water. They are fun too. They swim away though. I do like trying to get as many fish to surround me as possible when swimming. It makes me feel like I am hiding in a group of fish. It also makes me feel like I'm Aquaman. So this painting is coming along nicely. I am adding the last details to make the eyes pop and sparkle. I am also finishing up the tiny details. I hope I was able to give the illusion that you were swimming in a rocky reef with the sun on your back, light filtering through the water as a fine scale triggerfish swims past. I hope this painting makes feelings and memories burst forth that you didn't know were there. I hope it inspires you to go out and see one for yourself.
there we have it. What do you think? I personally love this painting. I want to do more like it. The entire background was based off of my imagination, and the fish was from a reference photo that I took. And this was a test for me. I want to be able to create backgrounds and fun like compositions with my art in the future, and this was just a fun, easy, well, it wasn't very easy. It was just a fun test for me to see where I can go with my art. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It'll help this community grow. This month I'm going to be uh, this month I'm going to be supporting MS Research, which is really fun. In April I'm going to be doing a walk with one of my friends, so we're going to do an MS walk down in Seattle. It's going to be super fun. Would you be interested in a print of this uh, painting? If so, let me know in the comments below. Then I then I can get those ordered and get those to you. I just want to see an interest level for this. I've been Brandon. God bless. Remember to spread love, curiosity, and creativity, and I will see you in our next adventure.